first Nations League tournament has reached the final stage. So let's take a look at everything you need to know about the matches coming up. Designed to increase interest in international football, UEFA's first Nations League tournament would seem to have been a success so far. Replacing traditional friendlies with a competitive tournament has added an edge to games for fans and teams alike. The tournament finals will be played every two years. The fact that four of the qualifying places at the Euro 2020 tournament will be given to playoff winners based on their Nations League performance gives the competition its credibility. The major European countries, including the four Nations League finalists this summer, England, Portugal, Switzerland and the Netherlands, will hope to qualify for Euro 2020 via the traditional pathway as one of the top two in their group. With 10 groups, 20 of the 24 Euro 2020 finalists will be decided in the normal way. However, should any of them slip up, the remaining four places at Euro 2020 go to countries based on their Nations League positioning. This is determined by a 16-team playoff taking place in March 2020, essentially replacing the previous playoff system for the Euros but allowing lower-ranking teams a chance to get to the finals. For example, one of Azerbaijan, Macedonia, Belarus, Georgia, Armenia, Latvia, the Faroe Islands, Luxembourg, Kazakhstan, Moldova, Liechtenstein, Malta, Andorra, Kosovo, San Marino or Gibraltar is now guaranteed to be at Euro 2020. Thanks for clearing that up, Niall. Simple, right? Let us know what you think in the comments. Are you happy to see international football being rebranded in this way? Did you know that the winners of this summer's finals don't automatically qualify for Euro 2020? Now we know all about the tournament as a whole, let's take a look at the finals taking place this summer. After topping their individual groups in the top tier of the Nations League, England, Netherlands, Switzerland and Portugal will battle it out to become the first champions of the competition. There will be two semi-finals, Portugal v Switzerland and England v Netherlands, followed by a third place playoff and the final, which are both taking place on the 9th of June. Did you know that the trophy represents all 55 UEFA national associations and is made of sterling silver, weighs 7.5 kilograms and is 71 centimetres tall? No? Well, you do now. Let's take a look at the four semi-finalists. First up, Portugal. The Portuguese have an abundance of talent throughout their squad. The reigning European champions also have the advantage of being on home soil. With a forward line including the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Bernardo Silva, and a midfield including Bruno Fernandes and Ruben Neves, they're going to be a hard side to stop. Switzerland are their opponents in the semi-finals and will be massive underdogs for that game. But with the majority of their squad formed of players from the Bundesliga, they can't be discounted lightly. Add in players like AC Milan's Ricardo Rodriguez and Newcastle's Fabian Scher and the Swiss will look forward to their chance to cause an upset in the tournament. England manager Gareth Southgate has the challenge of uniting a squad that saw eight of its 23 players involved in European club finals only last week. No Arsenal players have been picked, so the major challenge will be making sure the Spurs and Liverpool players are getting along well after their Champions League final. Given this is a chance for the country to win a trophy for the first time since 1997's Le Tournoi, that should be enough to focus the players' minds. Southgate's squad is a great balance of youngsters out to make their names on the international stage, like Jadon Sancho, alongside more established players. Made up of many players who took England to the World Cup semi-final in 2018, this side will look to build on their recent progress and take home the trophy this summer. In England's way in the semi-finals is Ronald Koeman's Netherlands side. A talented squad featuring two of the most promising youngsters in European football, Frankie de Jong and Matisse de Ligt, has a brilliant balance with experienced heads like Virgil van Dijk and Daley Blint in there too. As always for a Dutch manager heading into a tournament, the challenge doesn't seem to be the quality of players at their disposal, but the best method to utilise a ridiculously talented squad. We'll find out versus England how much their club exertions have taken out of these players. If Koeman can knit together his side, they could be in with a shout of taking the trophy back to the Netherlands. So that's how things are looking heading into the first Nations League final. Did you know as well that VAR's going to be used throughout the finals? So it's going to be interesting to see how that's progressed internationally since the World Cup. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win and who you're looking forward to seeing play. Help us to 50,000 subscribers by hitting subscribe. We're almost there. I'll see you next time on the Squawker YouTube channel.